Whether it's things like chat GPT or the current market trends, there's a lot changing in the business world. What does that mean for data engineers? If you are subscribed to my newsletter, I gave kind of some of my thoughts in terms of what I see happening in 2023. Honestly, it's just what's been happening in 2022 and 2021 and proliferating further. And it's not just me who are often saying some of these things, right? Uh, Joe Reese has talked about it, uh, Zach Wilson, and I just wanted to kind of add my own color to what I see happening uh, in 2023 in the data world. So here are some of the things that I predict will continue to happen and to be pushed by everything from market forces to technology that's changing. Like again, ChatGPT, because that's I think the most recent one. So I've got terrible recency bias sometimes. So the first thing, especially again, referencing things like ChatGPT, but also just us becoming more specific uh, with skill sets is again the specifications of skills and i've referenced this in a video back a while ago i'm kind of splitting out the different roles like data scientist analytics engineer analyst data engineer and so on and even further than that things like ml ops engineer and machine learning engineer as tools kind of continue to fill the gaps uh whether that be ai assisted or just you know different solutions that are trying to make our lives easier and we figure out where they fit, the repeated tasks that we've been doing kind of get moved away. You know, you can think about this similar to any other industrial revolution, except for now it's technology that's, you know, basically being revolutionized. We're removing all of this redundant code that we're doing over and over again, whether it's data connectors, whether it's even similar data transformations. If we can remove those or get chat GPT, or we can get some sort of co-pilot um, to essentially just say, hey, build some sort of transform that we build over and over again anyways, that removes some form of human work. And what I see that doing in particular is forcing us to specialize. So as I've discussed way forever ago, I've always kind of referenced data engineers in at least two camps, or at least being more of a spectrum, where data engineers on one side were more technical, and on the other side were more business focused. Let's dig into that more. We're seeing that again with things like analytics engineer, in a lot of those tools that are getting rid of that middle in terms of the work that we do. So you're gonna see technical data engineers who are really focused on maybe using things like Rust or Scala to make even more performant things like applications that maybe are more performant or pipelines that are, you know, increased performance, reducing the amount of data that goes from point A to point B, whatever it is, you know, really just improving that to either reduce costs or improve whatever speed or latency that is required as well as possibly try to store and manage larger amounts of data as like applications just continue to give more complex data on a daily basis. And from a similar standpoint, we have this other side, this other spectrum, where it's the more you are some sort of analytics engineer that can drive business value and really connect with the business, communicate with the business, understand what they need, that will become more valuable because again, that will be more difficult for AI, at least immediately to take over. So because that will be more difficult for either solutions or whatever co-pilots exist to kind of to bridge that gap, because not only do you often have to deal with, again, other people and thus communicating with and thus communicating with other people, you also have to deal with things like ambiguity and forcing them to give you the right uh, instructions on what they need. So there's something there where as long as you're kind of a little more human and can kind of translate and understand and, you know, take these instructions and not just follow them blindly, but, you know, prod a little more, there will be value there as well. I think the other thing that's kind of obvious, depending on if you're working more for SMBs or mid-market versus enterprise, is this reduction in budgets. And what that's driven by, and this has been pointed out by me, Joe Reese, Lauren Bollock, is the fact that for the last 10 years, none of us have known a world without super low interest rates and what that means. It means companies can spend and invest and borrow far more money than they maybe should be. And so now we're going into this world where it's like, hey, if you want to be data driven, well, it might not come at any cost, which is kind of the world we lived in before. You know, you had data teams that would blow up to 50, 100, 1000 people because you had the money to do it because money was cheap. And now we're going into this world where it's not going to be that way. And companies that maybe don't have access to as much cash need to re kind of figure out what they're trying to do. And I think this is great because what this is going to force companies to do is, is instead of taking on every possible data project, they're going to have to look at what they're doing and be like, okay, what do we actually want to do? They're going to have to develop some sort of strategy and not just <laughs> blindly do, you know, something that they read online. You know, they went to a conference and they're like, okay, we're going to start doing NLP because that's what everyone else is doing. But instead, they're going to be like, what values do we want? But instead, hopefully, they'll be looking at their business and being like, hey, what are our goals? 
let's take those goals and see what our data team can do with it, especially now that we've cut it in half. So I think people are going to be taking a more realistic view on what they should be doing. They're going to be looking for the right solutions rather than any solution, right? Like if they want to do ML, they might hire a $200,000 ML engineer or data scientist, or they might look for a solution that maybe can do some of what they need for a 10th of the cost. Again, I do think this will impact more SMBs in the mid market, but obviously we're also seeing this happen at enterprise as well. So I think there'll be some reshuffling for a bit for the next few months. Eventually companies will want answers to questions. And if they don't have the teams there, they'll try to reassess and, and make their teams support whatever data questions that they have. So I do think there'll be some reassessing if teams have completely been cut because I've actually talked to a few people where that's happened. But overall, yeah, I think there's gonna be just a rationalization of spend, you know. And that kind of breaks into this next one and that's data quality. And me, Randy, again, Zach Wilson have all kind of pointed this out. Me forever ago, back in 2017 when I wrote actually a decent article. Uh, Randy kind of wrote one somewhere, I think a year or two later, or maybe. Randy also wrote one and Zach did a video on this. But data quality is kind of this interesting space. And I say that because, again, I always reference the Airbnb article from 2018, where they decided that it was important to do data quality. But this isn't new. Like, I remember going to DEMA events, which is a data management organization. And they would always say that you'd have people who were far more experienced, you know, have 20 years of experience. And they'd always say, you know, garbage in, garbage out. And it's just that classic adage, like, we're just always fighting this world where garbage data gets shoved in. And the problem is now it's getting shoved in even faster than we can even figure out what's wrong. And so we can talk about like, yes, we want data quality, but we're trying to figure out the right way to implement it. There are a ton of new solutions that have come out, some that are focused more towards the end where tables may be created and then you're doing your data quality check. There are others like elementary data that you can kind of shove in between your DBT jobs. And there's more enterprise focused products like LightUp data and Excel data. So there's a lot of solutions that are coming into play that are just focused on data quality. And I know several of them that have made contracts with large enterprises. I'm talking about your classics, you know, your Coca-Cola's, your other large brands. I'm not going to be naming exactly who it is, but they've signed six, seven figure contracts over there. So on that side, data quality is super important, but I'm having a hard time personally when I work with my clients that are more in the mid market space having them maybe pick an option that's a little bit smaller. You know, often some of these solutions are closer to around 20, 30K. Some people, that's great, that's fine, but it is definitely a little bit of a harder sell, especially if budgets are tightening. It's just becoming a little bit harder to sell. So part of me really does hope that data quality becomes more important because if you have goals like implementing machine learning models, you need to start out with good data quality. That's just a given. But if companies force their teams to be more focused on budget, it'll be hard because not only will they be limited in terms of products that they can purchase, but they'll also be limited in terms of time that they have to say like, hey, we can't just like push out this table. We need to like you know, do some data quality checks. So I see data quality improving and the need and, and data quality initiatives, you know, improving on enterprise, but I'm seeing some wavering more on the mid market space. So that's what I see generally in those markets. This is all anecdotal from my experience, my consulting. If you consult, please do comment below and let me know if you're seeing similar things or if you just work in data, I'd love to see what you, you think because I'm seeing a lot of people complain about data quality in my state of data survey. That's probably the most common answer minus a few others, but I'm really hoping we actually do things about it. Finally, and this is kind of based off of some recent investing I've been doing, I do think we're gonna finally get to a point where hopefully deploying things like ML models become easier. When I first started in the data science world, I did all of this analysis on, on the data set and developed a model. And I just got to a point where I was like, now what? Like, what do I do with this? Like, I, I have no idea, right? Like I've done all this research. I've done all this R. I was doing R back then and I have no idea what to do with it. I've seen solutions now. There's a lot of great solutions that make it really easy in terms of like understanding, hey, this is your test data set. This is your validation data set. This is like your, like your model. You can deploy it here. Here's how we're going to track your model. That'll literally track how it performs over time. It'll track data drift. So it's trying to be the whole ML ops platform. And there's been a lot of, you know, open source versions of this, but I'm seeing more UI based versions. And some people probably don't like that. I know that many of us prefer to do things from scratch, but the more we can kind of lower that barrier, the more likely you're going to see people deploying these models. Of course, that can expect to data quality. So hopefully we improve data quality first, but I am seeing a barrier of entry kind of lowering there where 
we're making it easier. We're creating clearer flows, right? Like, so instead of seeing these crazy diagrams of people connecting to S3 buckets for where they deploy the model and uh, feature stores and all these different components, you're seeing people try to develop some sort of system to make that all very easy and have a clear flow, which means, you know, data scientists who maybe don't understand DevOps as well or how to deploy a model or ML ops can kind of see like, okay, this is how I deploy a model. This is how I deploy code. And it lifts a lot of that. And to be clear, that's how Facebook operated. Like, it's not like you developed this model and had to deal with all this crazy complicated other, you know, manual processes in order to deploy it and monitor it. You would deploy that model into a system that basically would take care of all of the heavy lifting. And so that's generally what happens is you'll see things occur first in tech companies that have money to spend, or at least used to, on all this research into technology. And then eventually three to five years later, you'll see it kind of become mainstream. So that's kind of my final prediction here in terms of what I see happening in 2023. And honestly, there's a ton of other things I could probably sit here and predict and pontificate, but I don't want to spend all day. I think those are my main points of what I see happening in the next year. Again, I'll continue to look around and if I see investments, uh, I'll make them. Again, I'll continue to look around and, and let you know if I see trends. Uh, if you're not signed up for my newsletter, consider signing up below because that's part of what I talk about as well as, you know, helping you as a data engineer, maybe improve your career, look tell you how to maybe uh, get a raise or promotion you know i'm really trying to focus on making sure you kind of understand what is going on in this whole crazy data world with that guys i want to say thanks so much for watching this video and i will see you next time thank you and goodbye